Hi guys, it's Katina with Atomica Nuclei Tin Jewelry and today is another transformation video. So our goal here is to take this old um, Christmas tin, look it's got like a 1950s Christmas decoration on top and it's got the same pattern on the sides here that same starburst design and it's got some red in between so what we're going to do is to take this and we're gonna we're gonna transform it so what I'm wanting to help you guys accomplish in your tin jewelry work is that you can take a tin that has you know like this and it's even got a marred spot on it but you can still create something really cool out of it Okay, so it's gonna depend on where you cut and what you do to it to bring out a new design. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dismantle this tin, I'm gonna cut it down, and then um, I'll come back and show you what we're gonna do next. Okay, I'm back. I've dismantled the tin. I took my heavy duty metal shears that I got at any box store and I cut the tin down. So here's the top, and then I cut the sides. Okay, so we'll set these over here for now because we're going to focus on the, the top of the tin, okay? So since this design is, is pretty large, what I'm wanting to do, which is make a pair of earrings, I'm gonna use a larger size um, for these earrings because I want to be able to incorporate this and trans transform this pattern into something else. So I'm going to use the Sizzix die. This is a big teardrop shape, okay? And um, when I, for, the, for these dies, since you can't see, you know, where you're putting it when you place it on your tin, I always cut out a template from, um, it's, it's, I think it's like quilting pattern plastic. You can get it like Joann's in the quilting section. Um, they, these are sold in sheets and, it's, and it's, pretty, it's pretty thick and durable. So you can run this through your big kick and then you'll be able to have like a see-through piece that you can determine where you want um, to place it. Okay, so I, I think I like this for one of the earrings. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Sharpie marker, okay? And this is a fine point Sharpie, okay? And I'm gonna trace around, trace around this shape. Okay? And then peel it up and I keep double-sided tape on these so when I put it down and, and draw around it um, it's not going to move so here's our shape okay so I'm gonna take the shears and I'm gonna trim around this shape and then run it through my big kick so I'll put double-sided tape on my shape and then I will line it up and run it through the big kick and um, it'll pop out my shape now I'm gonna um, pick out one more area. I think this one here looks pretty good. Mm, maybe this one. I think I like this one better. All right, I'm gonna do this one. And, all right, this is the other one. Very good. All right, let me trace this one and then I will cut these two shapes out. Okay, so here's our earrings. So now I'm gonna cut these two shapes out and then I'll be back. Okay, so I thought I would show you what the sandwich looks like that I'm going to run through the pit kick. So these movers and shapers have a magnet on the back and so you want the movers and shaper shuttle. Turn it around here so you can see it. So this is the shuttle and this is a magnetic um, plate. So this will sit here and it'll keep it on 
um, in place and then you'll want I use double-sided tape to make sure that my tin stays where it's supposed to be and then you'll take one of these acrylic tops plates and you'll you'll put it like that and then I will run it one time through my big kick now only run it one time one direction because if you run it back and forth you you risk the possibility of busting your die and you don't want to do that okay so here I'll peel the tape off okay so this is one of the earrings okay and then I'll do the other real fast I just use the same same tape and then just line up you can see where your um, shape is where you've traced that where you've traced that shape press it down keep that tape in place okay make our sandwich and roll it through one direction one time Okay, so here's our trash, and here is our two shapes. This is what we're going to turn into earrings, okay? Now, when I look at these, okay, when you look at these, um, you can see on this one that there's still a little bit of marker where it didn't line up exactly. I was on the outside of it just a little bit and over here too, which that's fine. You can either take um, your metal file and file that away or if that doesn't work for you and, and after you've sanded or filed it and sanded, sanded it, it's still there. Um, if you put some of this 91% alcohol on, I don't know, a paper towel, cotton swab, whatever, it'll take this marker right off. So there's no problems there. So I'm gonna um, not sand on camera because that's annoying. Um, so but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sand these and then I'm gonna go ahead and poke my holes in here. And to poke my holes, I'm gonna use this 1.25 um, millimeter hole punch from uh, Rio Grande. It's a Swanstrom brand hole punch and it cuts really clean holes like there's no what I consider hanging chads. Uh, you know when you when you poke a hole and there's some metal sticking up in the back here this doesn't these um, hole punchers don't do that. Okay so let me sand and get the hole punch and then I'll come right back. Okay, I'm back. And I have taken the two earring pieces and I sanded them. So I went around them with a the metal file and then I went over them with 400 grit sandpaper and I went ahead and poked my holes in them for the ear wire. And now I'm ready for the transformation. So, when you're working with um, a, a design or an image that you're wanting to make into something totally different, you kind of have to just think about the basic lines that are in the design. And so, I thought this looked like flower petals, okay? And so, I went in my um, collection of embossing folders and found this one. Can you see this? Yes. This is Bohemian Botanicals from the Sizzix line, and it's like a 3D texture impression embossing folder. So, it's kind of deep. You can run your finger over it. You can probably see how, how deep it's going to be. So, what I want to do, and I'm going to see if I can't let you guys see this. 
But this, this flower here has, see this flower right here? It has some pointy petals on it. And I'm like, oh, that would line up with the points here pretty well. So if you can see how this is gonna line up, can you see that at all? Let's see here. Kind of got a glare from the other. But you can see where those petals are gonna overlap some of those gold um, points from that starburst, okay? So to get this to stay in place while I run it through my big kick, I use um, some of this painter's tape and I just take a piece of the painter's tape. You don't really need that much. That's way more than what you need unless you want to tape down the top and the bottom. Sometimes I do that. Okay, so then you're going to look at where you want it, where you want that to line up. I think that looks pretty good. All right. Now, when you have it all taped down there, you're going to run it through your big kick. And so these are pretty thick. And so um, you'll want to just use a, a plastic part or a plastic top and run it through there. Okay. And sometimes I, I'm going to show you this too because if, if it doesn't feel, <clears throat> if, it, if your sandwich doesn't feel like it probably impressed real well, this is some more of that quilters template plastic that I get at Joann's and I just cut a square piece that would fit on top and use it like a shim um, because the <laughs> the big kit came with the shim but I destroyed it years ago so anyway I use this piece of quilters plastic and then run it through there and then that'll definitely give you enough pressure to make a good impression okay and I and for these I do roll it back and forth a couple times and you can see there that gave a really good impression on the back okay all right I'm gonna keep my pieces here and just transfer the tape to a new one so um, I'm kind of picky sometimes and I don't want the exact same spots on my for both of my um, pieces so I'm gonna move it over a little bit and capture a little a little different piece of um, with the petals and with the curly Q here you see how that one is sandwiched in there okay I'm gonna do the same thing run it through my big kick with that with that plastic plate and with my homemade quilters template shim and then we're gonna look on the back and that one came out real well too it's got a real nice um, impression on it okay so we'll set this aside and now we're going to get out my little my little plastic. Um, I think it's for when you're hitting with a disc cutter. But anyway, we're going to sand these two pieces. Okay. Now for this, I'm going to use some 180 grit sandpaper. Um, you can still use the 400 grit if you want to but it just kind of goes faster this way and i'm going to sand away and i want to make these petals on this flower come alive as well as the little curly q here And then we'll do 
this one. Okay, so the the earrings are not going to be identical, but I don't want them to be. I want them to have the same artistic feeling, but I want them to be their own design. I think I need to go back over this guy with it a little bit more. And it's up to you how much that you sand away. Okay, but once you're happy with it, um, what you're gonna wanna do is, this is just a wet wipe, a wet one's wipe, you know, with some, with some alcohol in it. It's a, and I'm gonna clean this off here so we can see our design. You see how that's coming about? Let's see if we can get that a little bit better. It's a little dark. Okay, so I'm gonna clean these guys up. See how grubby? Okay, and then what we're going to do, and sometimes I go around it just to make sure because sometimes with those 3D embossing, um, it'll make the edges a little sharp in some areas, but this one didn't. Sometimes they do though, so just be, be on the watch when you use a really deep embossing folder on the thin tin that it doesn't um, you want it, you want it, let's see here can you see those you want to make sure that your sides remain um, smooth okay so we'll put that aside and now we're gonna take our two um, pieces and we're going to use some Jack's Blackener. You see that? Jack's Blackener and I'm going to pour a little bit in here into this bowl and then we're going to submerge both of our earrings in there. But to do this I use both my gloves. Now be careful handling this Jack's Blackener because um, if you get it on any of your tools, it'll rust them. So you got you have to be very careful about what you do with that. Cause see these, these pliers are only for Jack's Blackener because this is what it does to them. All right, so I'm just gonna take my design here. Can you see that where there's a flower image on there? Let me see if I can do my light a little bit better. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, anyway, we're gonna put it face down and I'm just gonna let that Jack's Blackener do its job, okay? When I'm happy with how black it is, we're gonna turn it over here and we're gonna see, ooh, that's pretty good. So um, when I'm happy about how black it is, and do you see that? that blackened it up a whole lot and you can really see that flower image in there. We're gonna put it in this, which is baking soda and water and that'll stop the process. Okay. Same here, I'm gonna let this guy sit until. Okay, and then here he is. I'm gonna put him in there. Let that baking soda stop that process. I'll pull them out, put them over here to dry. Now, I'm gonna take these inside and I'm gonna wash them with soap and water because I wanna be sure that I get off all the residue from the Jack's Blackener. And so, I'm gonna wash these up and take care of these. Don't save this, don't pour it back in a in the bottle or anything just throw it out and then be sure that whatever you are using like this is the only bowl I use for Jack's Blackener um, 
so just be sure that you wash everything real thorough. I don't really think it's that necessarily toxic, but it's, I mean, just, just handle with care. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and I have washed my pieces. So here's what they're looking like right now. Hope you can see those okay. So we've got that flower design embossed on here. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to take some vintage um, gloss and some vintage patina in Victorian gold. Okay, I'm going to shake those up and shake this to that ball rattles. And I'm just going to pour some here on my ceramic tile. Okay, and I'm going to use a lot more extender than I do um, the patina. And we might have to go back through and look and make sure that this is, you know, the consistency that I want. But just take a soft brush. I just take care of this right on the right on the tile and that's looking a little bit thick so I'm going to put just a little bit more of an extender in there. Okay now I want to put a wash over this okay because I want to bring everything together to blend. So I'm just going to go over this real lightly And I'm going to keep pulling off what I don't want. Okay. And I'm pretty, pretty satisfied with this. Okay. Let me get that wet off there. Paint this one. I just want the wash over the top. Okay, and what I don't want, I'll pull off. Very gently. And if you notice, I'm pulling heavier at the top and leaving more down here at the bottom. take a look and see if they look yep okay so let me show you what they have come out like now I'll let this you see those let me see here if I can let's see if we can get these I don't know if you can see them pretty well or not here how the gold has kind of that wash has kind of blended everything together again okay so I'm gonna let this dry completely and then what I'm going to do is spray the front and back now I'll spray the back probably just once with this rust-oleum crystal clear enamel but I'll spray the front twice okay and then I'll make them into earrings so I hope this helps um, enlighten you on how you can look at a pattern like that 1950s Christmas and see something different. All right. So this is this is uh, the same tin only. It came in a bigger size. So this is the bigger size of the tin, but there you can see what it's kind of what it started out like. And then you know what we've what we've turned it into um, it's a transformation and if you ask me these look like really cool fall <laughs> fall earrings instead of you know a 1950s Christmas decoration so just let me know what you think and um, if you have any questions don't hesitate to ask um, I'll, I'll answer them you know as well as I can um, on 
cleaning up this tile, soap and water gets that up just fine. So it might be even, no, that's not gonna, well, yeah, you could probably even scrape it with this, this wet ones wipe. All right, so um, if you guys have any ideas on what you would like for me to show you, um, you know, leave them in the comments section and I'm always up for challenges. So um, let me know what you think. I hope this video helped you think outside the box a little bit more when it comes to looking at a tin and creating a really cool piece of jewelry. Um, I'll put the um, I'll put the picture of you know how how these turned out. I'll put the picture at the end of the video. But anyway, y'all have a nice day and thank you for watching. Take care. Thank you.